so in the first of these review videos, um, I thought I'd discuss the um, Centre of Excellence courses. Um, as I said in the, in the introduction, um, obviously I'm in no way affiliated with any of these companies whatsoever. The only reason that um, I feel somehow qualified to talk about them is because I have done a lot of their courses. So I thought I would share um, what I have learned about each one. Now, in the case of Centre of Excellence, um, I think I've currently completed a, about 12 of their courses, I think, and I've got another 57, I think, in my account that I am working through. So, um, yeah, I've done quite a lot of them. Um, as you can tell, I do generally like them. That's why. Now, um, a few general things to talk about, as I will be doing with all of these courses, obviously. Um, I know it sounds a little fiscally minded, but I thought I'd start off with the price, simply because there's no point in hearing about a course that sounds really fun if you then find you cannot afford it. Now, Centre of Excellence is one of those that does what quite a lot of them do, actually, we will be talking about, um, in that technically the courses are, they vary a little bit, they're mostly about £127 each, or is it £129? Or, and some of them are slightly different, so some of them might be 140 something that, but there's not much variation. However, um, don't ever pay that price for them because it would be completely pointless. Um, the actual price you're looking at is £29 per course, and occasionally £27. Um, the reason being that there are sales on all of the time. You can always get a discount on any course, pretty much at any given time. I think I think probably this, the courses are only that price for the, presumably, the bare minimum time that legally they have to be in order to call it a sale when they have a sale, if you see what I mean. So, um, yes, if you're wondering, okay, so how do I get discounts? Well, there's a couple of ways. So firstly, go on the Centre of Excellence Facebook page, um, follow the Facebook page, um, you'll see on there they regularly post up um, posts about every time they have a new course for example, and it will say, oh for a limited time only you can get it this new course for £29, and I'll give you a code. It's not actually as limited as it might sound. Um, you do sometimes see, as I say, posts like that that will give you the discount code, but the better way to do it is simply to, as you scroll down, make sure you're viewing the comments on all the posts. Sometimes Facebook can hide them from you, so you need to click view comments. And what you'll find is endless comments. If you scroll down this page, it's just endless, endless comments of people saying, can I have a discount code for X course? And somebody will have replied and given them the discount code. Um, if, obviously, you can't find the course you want to do, then just add your own comment asking. But generally, there's for any given course there's always a discount code that you can use then they also have sort of site-wide sales quite regularly at the moment they are actually having one where the courses are all 27 pounds they're normally 29 so you get an extra two pound off so it's quite a good time to get some and i think that's going on until october um the other thing you need to do if you want to make sure you get the discount code sign up to their mailing list the email address because then you'll get emails Again, every time they release a new course, they'll send you an email saying, get this course for £29. Also, as I say, when they have a site-wide sale like they are at the moment, they will send you an email about it with the code. So, yes, that is the actual price that you are talking about. Um, during lockdown, they did also put up some courses for free um, about home education and uh, there was one about improving your memory and so on. So there are occasional free courses that you can also do as well, which is quite nice. Um, I would say it gives you a bit of a taster of the courses, but um, as I'm going to be talking about, maybe not. Um, so, yeah, that brings us on to the subject of reviews of my opinion of the courses um, in general. Um, but I think, well, I'll start with some overarching things about the website and so on itself, because I think because that applies to all courses. Um, so one thing, a little bit. I don't um, some people may think it's a, a bit of an odd thing to even mention, but something that really um, slightly bugs me about the courses is the fact that you cannot copy and paste in any way sections of the course. Now, when you, when you purchase the course, obviously it is entirely online. There is an option to buy printed materials as well, and that costs an additional amount. It, it, it's quite a bit, actually. Um, 
You can also buy an audio course quite often for courses, which I think is only about ten pound. But well, that might only be when it's on sale. But it's usually on sale. So, um, but the printed materials then cost another. I think it's forty or fifty pounds. It's quite a bit. Um, and yeah. So from that point of view, you think, oh well, I can kind of see why they don't want you to print it if you can buy the print. But the stupid thing is, you can print it. On your website, and it actually tells you, oh, if you want print, you've got just press print. But, I suspect uh, most people know, because um, I know I'm not the only person that's found this, clicking print just on a website is a very bad idea, because usually it just goes to the printer and you didn't get any chance to sort of say, um, actually, what sort of format are you doing? And you have ridiculous things like where the printer prints out a whole picture over about four different pages using up all its ink and, the, you know, you get text missing off the screen. I mean, it's just such a mess. So I never do that. If I want to print out something, what I would do is I would then copy and paste it into a Word document, for example, or something like that, so I can see exactly what I want. And sometimes you don't necessarily want the pictures. They're very nice pictures. Sometimes you might want to save them for something, you can't. Um, but you don't necessarily want them if you want to just print out a paragraph. You think, oh, that's really interesting, I want to put that in my notes or something. You can't, you're going to need to have to write it out. Um, because there's no way that you can copy highlight text on it. If you try to screenshot it, it won't work. It's, the website is being well sort of copy protected. Which I just find a bit tiresome when they don't mind you printing it. But sometimes you just, well, I just want to save that for my record. Mm. Yeah, I, I find that a little bit tiresome because I do love prefer things in a printed format, but the reason I didn't order the printed um, materials for the courses is because I really, you know, I have too much stuff. I really don't have enough space for the whole course and I don't necessarily, I, I just want a few bits of it. So I end up just making handwritten notes, um, which, you know, in this day and age, you think, hmm. So anyway, I know that is a minor gripe and some people probably wouldn't even think about it anyway, but um, I just find that a little bit odd. Um, about the site, but generally um, I find it really good. It's really, really quick. As soon as you order the courses, you'll have them in there already. Um, you go to your learning centre and you'll have them, of course, as they just scroll um, through them. You click on the little begin studying and it will take you to the course. You can then hop through the different, the different modules. Um, Generally, the courses are very well laid out. The vast majority of them are just predominantly um, writing, but there are some that have video sections as well. And in fact, it will tell you that even before you buy the course, it will say the number of videos that are included in it. Um, so that's done it. But generally, um, there'll just be a short video clip, maybe five minutes or so, and then the rest of that page will still be writing. So it is predominantly a written course, um, all of them. Um, as you can see, the text is split up with with some nice pictures, but that's. Um, but yes, there's, there will be um, quite a lot of reading to do for each course. Um, in terms of dealing with the company, I've always found them very helpful. They mark assignments pretty quickly, um, and any time I've got in touch with them, I've got a quick response. Um, so I'd say their customer service was very good. Now. Moving on to, um, as to the actual quality of the individual courses, which obviously is very important. Um, the problem is it's quite a difficult one to talk about because um, it does suffer, the site does suffer from the problem that a few of the providers that I'm going to be talking about suffer from, which is multiple authorship, um, in the sense that their courses are obviously all written by different people, so some are better than others. Now, generally, the Centre of Excellence ones, I do find that they are overall, the majority of them are pretty good. Some of them um, have, have been excellent. But there are a few <laughs> that I would um, warn against. Um, I'll just try to think now. So. The other problem is as well with them is that sometimes I get the feeling as you're going through the course you get the feeling that suddenly we've had a massive change in tone as if the change the author has changed halfway through the course and I imagine a lot of them are written by multiple people. The problem is that sometimes that can be so jarring that you get the feeling that they've copied and pasted something from somewhere else into the course. Not that they have, but somebody has, the person who wrote the course. I don't know that they've just, oh I've just taken this bit and put this in my course. 
because sometimes you think, what, what the heck? Um, and so, for example, I did one which was the card making business course. Now, I did this one very, very long time ago now. Uh, well, some years ago. Um, so I'm struggling to remember now. But I know there was a really distracting bit where the course was... See, the website is based in the UK. So the courses are written from a perspective of being in the UK. It doesn't really matter. You could do them anywhere in the world, potentially. But it was clearly, you know, from the UK spelling and everything. Like you could tell it was... But then we got onto the section of, oh, setting up your business. And suddenly... We had this whole section that wandered completely off the point and started talking about needing a license to set up your business and the fact that the word license was misspelled really gave away um apologies for the plane going over really um gave away where they got that from and it just felt like they'd copied and pasted this off some website about setting up a business without checking that it was actually applied to the US. Um, I mean, if um, one of the assessment questions actually asked you about, ooh, what's the process for setting up a business? And I, that's what I wrote. I said, well, no, you don't need a licence, actually, because we live in the UK. Um, I still got full marks for it, so I obviously didn't mind my sarcasm, but um, um, yeah, it's just something to, to be aware of. Um, a similar thing happened with the, there's um, a course which I've just finished doing, which is marketing for, we'll get this right, marketing for therapists and coaches, or possibly the other way around. I think that's what they've called it. So the idea is, the way it talks about the course, it's just, yes, learning about marketing for, as it's, therapists and coaches, it's a really wide, like it could be anything. Um, and it starts off fine, you know, sort of saying about how, oh, you know, we know this is something that often doesn't come very naturally to people who just want to sort of, they're in a business to sort of help people and maybe marketing and business stuff isn't really their thing and okay that's fine. But it started off just being sort of very general and then about halfway through or maybe even earlier, suddenly it was like it had been taken out of a completely different course which was marketing for hypnotherapists because suddenly it was all about hypnotherapy. It was all the different ways you could use hypnotherapy in your and you could market your hypnotherapy services and you could also sell hypnotherapy scripts and, and whatever. And it kept addressing the reader. Suddenly the tone had quite changed. It was more directly addressing the reader because you're a hypnotherapist, it sort of said. And you thought, well, I'm not actually. It didn't matter in the sense that you could just say, oh, it was using that as an example. But the fact that it was clearly so aimed just at hypnotherapists was distracting because well actually I'm not one so what why is it when you time you got onto the on the assessments the assessment questions were much more vague they allowed you to sort of apply it to anything so it was if the assessment questions always feel like they're written by somebody different of course but yeah so anyway so that got a little bit odd there the change and then it became even more in the I think it was only about the was it the penultimate module? Anti-penultimate module? It was, it was quite near the end. Suddenly it went as if that bit had been written by some sort of American marketing guru. It was, it was all about, you know, your business must be your life and all about, you know, your entire life is around improving your business and driving this for... Uh, no, thank you. Um, I quite like to have a life, actually. And it just seemed completely out of keeping with the rest of it, so that was a bit weird. I mean, otherwise, it was a good course, but there were just odd moments where you thought, what? Well, <laughs> you've just copied this bit out of a sort of, yes, self-help manual for executives. I don't know, it was a little bit odd, that. Um, while we're on that subject, actually, <laughs> one course I would definitely not recommend um, is the one that calls itself the organic skincare business course. It is absolutely no such thing. It is a business course um, for people working for L'Oreal or something like that. It's utterly bizarre. It says it's all about um, starting up a sort of artisan skincare brand or so. And it, it, believe me, it is nothing to do with that whatsoever. There is about a page in the entire course that actually has some relevance to artisan sort of producers um, and that's about it. The entire rest of it is all about managing your hundreds of employees and um, building up your, your business empire with your million pound budget 
or million dollar budget I should say since it's the entire course is American um, I know that sounds a bit racist <laughs> It's all about business and money, so it must be American. But honestly, I do a lot of transcription jobs for businesses. Yeah. I did an experiment one time. I counted up the number of times money was mentioned in an hour-long conversation. Um, it was between a, it was a business that was in the UK, and they were discussing their finances. And the one I compared it to was a business in the US where a reporter and a bloke were just chatting. In a, mostly they were chatting in the car on the way to do an interview that was nothing to do with anything what's at all visible. Um, they were just having a chat. So I compared what the two in the UK business, how many times they mentioned money and the two in the US one. There was no comparison. The, the UK ones mentioned it 17 times in an hour, even though it was the topic of their conversation. Whereas the US ones mentioned it more than 150 times. Um, yeah. Even apart from that, the fact that the examples given in this organic, um, organic, I'll get it right, Richie, organic skincare business course, they gave various examples of successful skincare companies. Every single one of them was US based. Many of them don't even exist in this country, which made it quite difficult when some of the assessment questions were finding out about them. Um, well, I don't know. Sometimes Google can be quite stroppy about showing you websites for companies that don't actually trade in your country. It can be very stroppy sometimes. And I found that one of them, I think it had gone out of business or something, and I couldn't find any information about it. It kept saying results blocked in your country. Okay, did they do something naughty that we're not supposed to know about? I have no idea. Um, but yes, it was quite hopeless. Um, that was also a course where some of the assessment questions were quite bad. That is one criticism I would say overall of all the courses. You do have to watch those assessment questions sometimes. Um, and this is, again, something which I find on so many course providers. It's like they don't proofread the assessment questions and sometimes it feels like a computer made them up. I'm not saying that's necessarily the case, though I wouldn't bet on it. With the assessment questions, it does differ some... For the assessments, um, which I probably should talk about really in general, it really does differ on different courses. The ma Probably the majority, I would say, of the courses I've done, you'll get the questions, there'll be about 20 questions, and usually the first 10 of them will just be multiple choice questions that are super easy, and then the rest of them will be more extended answer ones, but generally they're quite simple. Again, the mar it'll tell you the marks at the top, so it'll tell you roughly how much you need to write. And there's usually a few short answer ones and they get gradually longer. Sometimes the very last question will be a little bit longer. Sometimes I'll ask you to actually write a little mini essay or something and then upload that. Sometimes it might be something practical. So in the gardening course, for example, you do lots of garden plans and upload those. You know, it's things that make sense. And for business type ones, you probably end up doing a business plan or something towards the end of the course. But it's all kind of things that would make sense. Um, some of the assessments are a little bit different. Obviously, so some of them, I mean, the creative writing one, for example, is a lot of writing involved. You're going to be doing a lot of creative writing exercises from assessment one. Um, so that's quite a big undertaking. Then some of the assessments, as I say, they do differ greatly. Some of them are actually surprisingly in depth. You think, oh, OK, I actually have to do some work on this one. An example of that is, for example, the jewellery making business course. I was quite surprised. Instead of just really simple questions, it sort of it actually asks for your opinion, you know. What do you think is the greatest contribution to jewellery design over the years and why? Oh, okay, I actually have to use my brain for this question, this is interesting. Um, you frequently don't on online courses, um, so that's interesting. Others are incredibly, incredibly easy. Like um, some of the um, more esoteric ones, shall we say, like the magical herbalism, um, the master herbalism one actually is exactly the same. You don't get multiple choice questions generally, they're just all little, you know, little box right in it, but every question is like one or two marks. It's just answering, what herb was used for this? Hmm, well, that's easy. Um, it's very, very simple, that. So I say it really does differ depending on the course, which is why I can't really talk about general, but that's kind of where you're going. However, yes, to say about what is wrong with the assessments, not always the case. I say sometimes they are fine, but sometimes, especially with the multiple choice ones, Sometimes it is just like, as I say, it's almost like a computer scanned the course, p 
picked out a random fact from it and asked, just put it in question form. And so sometimes, because sometimes it doesn't make sense. Sometimes the grammar is just off and you think, I'm not quite sure what you're asking me, that that isn't actually a question. <laughs> and you have to kind of, I mean, you can usually sort of figure out what the answer is meant to be from, well, okay, that's the only thing that vaguely makes sense. But it doesn't actually make sense because it's not grammatical, but never mind. Um, sometimes the, uh, the questions that you have to write answers to as well can come out a bit strange. Um, yeah. They're, I mean, they're also just a bit odd because sometimes they're just asking for sort of dates of something that's totally irrelevant as if somebody just didn't know anything about it but just went, oh, oh yeah, I'll ask you a question about that. But I mean, you can just go back to the course materials and check if you can't remember the exact year that some insignificant person was born. Yeah, it's fine. Um, but yes, some of the questions can be a little bit weird. Um, with the organic skincare one, so I was saying about the, one of the problems they had was that we had with that was that yes, some of the questions were just so, I mean, I actually had to send a message at one point saying that the questions were just wrong. It asked um, for a particular statistic, which was not given in the course materials. Um, actually, I found later it was given, but this was on module two or three, and it was mentioned briefly in module nine, so I hadn't got there yet. Um, and I think, actually, I think there was another statistic it asked for later that wasn't in the course at all. I mean, but the problem was, I would have just uh, I looked at, tried to look it up on the internet, which I did, but it was a multiple choice question, and the answer I got from the internet wasn't any of the choices because it was the sort of thing that I can't exactly remember it now. It was like the number of people who do something. It was going to change over time, so the answer now probably wasn't the answer when the course was written. So I sent an email about this. I sent a message to them and saying, look, uh, this question doesn't make sense. So they told me what the right answer should be, because, oh yes, and they said they would get that changed. Um, obviously I don't know if they have or not, because I can't, I don't think you can take the assessment the second time, so I can't see it now, but... So yeah. Um, but there were also, there were other problems with the, um, some of the short answer questions for the Organic Skincare one, which is strange. There was one assessment where it asked the same question twice. Um, it asked you about what a particular... <laughs> what a particular chemical was, and then a couple of questions later it was mentioned again, and what is this? And I can't exactly remember now, but I remember that the first time it was asked, the question was just worded so badly, it was barely English, um, and I just uh, okay, that's a really weird question, but I'll kind of make up the answer. Um, and then a couple of questions later, Basically, the same question was asked, this time in English. Um, it actually made sense. So, yeah, I think something might have gone a bit wrong there. Um, so, as I say, there are there are a few dodgy ones like that. I'm trying to think. Yes, there's a couple like that, too. The Ancient Magic one was odd. It claimed to be, of course, all about sort of you know, ancient magic systems. Very interesting. It wasn't. It was entirely written, as, as far as I could tell, by a Wiccan who just wanted to tell you all about Wicca, which is not an ancient religion. Um, it's a very interesting modern religion. It is not ancient. It is in no way based on ancient religion. I'm sorry. Yeah, somebody needs to do a history lesson. The other problem with that course was it really felt like the person who had written it, apart from just wanting to write about Wicca, which is very interesting, I'm sure, but they do another course on that if you wanted to do that. Also, it did appear that English was their second language, um, and I really felt it would have benefited from some better proofreading. And the assessment questions didn't make sense either. Um, some of them were just so bad that you couldn't answer them correctly because you, well, I'm sorry, that's, that's nonsense. That's not a question. I mean, for example, there was one where it listed three herbs in the course about, the, it was nothing to do with anything particularly, but these were three particular herbs that we're going to talk about. Okay, fine. And then the assessment questions, one of them asked you about one of these herbs, and then the next question was basically, name the other sacred herb. What? <laughs> I mean, that's such a vague in, in, in what context, but I mean, even if we assume, okay, this is within the context of what you've just read in the course materials, there were still three of them. So if we assume it's not the one that the previous question was on, the other one, there's still two other <laughs> It's just hopeless. I can't answer a question, this doesn't make sense. Um, 
excuse my chomping. I'm standing over this bowl of fennel seeds and it's making me hungry. Anyway. Hmm. Anyway, um, yes, uh, don't let my negative um, comments put you off. As I say, this is just a, it's just to be aware of as a, a warning. I wish um, they would let you do like little taster se sessions, almost like read the first page of the course or something um, for each of them. I have suggested this to them, but you know. Because, as I say, the quality does vary greatly and you can get some real ones um, like, you know, the ancient magic organic skincare business course, things like that, which I would definitely not recommend that, um, that you do. Um, if you are running a million dollar skincare business and you want some help with it, then by all means do the organic skincare one, but that is not how it is marketed. Incidentally, if you do want to start up an, <laughs> an artisan skincare brand, then I will be coming to that in a later video because I have done courses in that that I would recommend, so uh, I will come to that. Stay tuned. Well, not literally to this video, but it will be coming to the channel. Um, hmm. Right, I, God, I need to brush my hair. <laughs> I haven't just been pulled through a hedge backwards, honestly. It's, um, I just washed my hair and it's still wet and this is what happened. In any case, <clears throat> yes, um, so do not let, as I say, any negative forms put you off. Just be careful that some of the causes, yeah. Others, others are really, really good. Um, so yes, um, the uh, for example, the, the free one they did on, on, on memory thing, actually there was a lot of stuff packed into that and it was quite, it was in depth and um, it was well written, you know. Um, I loved the Green Witchcraft one I did. I know it's a very silly thing to do a course on, but yeah, I just liked it. I love herbs and so on, so, you know. Um, and that was actually one of the best ones that I've done. It was really well written. It had actually been proofread, you know, and it, it was, yeah, that was, that was really, really good. Um, the, I don't know what other ones have I done. The Essential Oils business that was it that had its moments it had some really good bits it also then had some really weird bits where there was a section which was talking about essential oils and it just it was a series every every section in that was a started off with a video in fact i think it was just pretty much a, the video with each one and it was just this woman going through her doTERRA oils and um saying how wonderful they were it didn't actually tell you anything about the individual oils especially as some of them also will you know, proprietary blends of oils, and she's talking about, oh, this is so wonderful, and you're thinking, that's just some brand's blend of oils, it didn't even tell you which oils were in it, so, <laughs> this isn't very helpful, what's this got to do with anything, and you're sort of thinking, well, what? So, yeah, that was a bit of a mixed bag, that one. Um, the card making one, as I've said, was generally good, but then had a little odd moment in it. Um, the jewellery one, I haven't finished yet, but so far that's going very well. Um, yeah, I've quite enjoyed the aromatherapy one. Obviously, don't get carried away with some of these. It's, it's, it's well to bear that in mind. I will be mentioning this more in other courses, but with things like aromatherapy or something, don't think doing a course in aromatherapy online is going to qualify you as an aromatherapist. It won't. It's just if you're interested in a topic. You can then use pre-blended oils and things. Um, in a limited oops, in a limited capacity if you've done a bit of that. So um so there is that. But um yeah it's not practitioner level courses. So don't if it says that on it it's wrong. Just be careful with some of these things, they don't qualify you to do them. Things like herbalism for example you don't specifically need qualifications for. You won't get insurance if you don't have the right qualifications, but you don't necessarily need them. But for some things like aromatherapy you do. Um for example there's courses on there as well I think uh, I think this one's isn't it? CBT and that kind of thing, which is, you think, well, it's very interesting, you want to learn more about it, fine, but you, you can't qualify to be a practitioner that way, so just be aware of that. As I say, uh, there are a bit of a mixed bag, these these courses, so it's, um, <laughs> as I say, it's a shame that you can't sort of try them out a little bit before you buy them you kind of just have to buy one if it sounds really interesting and just um and and, and see i think central excellence is probably one of those that handles more off the wall subjects 
the more sort of esoteric, unusual, I'm trying to say this tactfully, but you know what I mean, the subjects rather better. There are some like serious kind of courses, if you see what I mean, you can do things, biology, biochemistry, so on. Okay, some of them are actually good. Um, so one example, for example, there's one especially on CBD oil. It's really surprisingly technical. Um, when I started reading, I think, oh, okay, this is a lot more intellectual than I was expecting. Um, there's a lot of science in it, which I think is really good. Um, it's, it's very, very interesting, but it's it's not a fluffy sort of course, if that makes sense, which, um, well, it doesn't really, because it's a very silly adjective to use, but I'm hoping you're following. Um, if yeah, if you if you you have courses that are more on things that are easy to write about, more kind of yeah, light subjects. I think they work quite well, generally. Um it's when it tries to do the more serious stuff, it sometimes goes a bit off. But as I say, not always. Um I forgot to mention that one actually, yeah, the C B D course is definitely one I would recommend. It is heavy on the science, um so if you're not into that might not enjoy it. There's quite a lot of heavy reading in it, but um, yeah, it's, it's it's very interesting to actually understand exactly how cannabinoids work and so on. Um, so that that's a very good course. I haven't I don't know, I haven't finished yet. So fingers crossed. But I've done <laughs> I've done just over half of it and it's been really good so far. So yeah. And um, that's a very good course. So yes, one final thing to talk about. I, I have briefly touched upon this um, already, but something I wanted to particularly highlight for each of these, because I think it's something that people often wonder about, um, is the way that assessments work. On course providers, um, assessments work, will often differ quite a bit, and sometimes they don't really tell you before you sign up for the course what your assessment's going to be like. So just to, to clarify with the Centre of Excellence ones, as I say, I have touched on this already, all the assessments are written assessments. It, it generally, you'd get a mix. Maybe you might get 20 questions, with the first 10 being just multiple choice. Yeah, um, kind of fact-based ones. And then you might get... The other 10 would be written ones, but you might get some short answer ones. And there's some slightly longer ones. The number of marks will, will tell you. There's, sometimes, what happens quite often is they're mostly short answer questions. They get a little bit longer, and then the last question would be like 10 marks. And that will be, I won't say an essay exactly, but like a little mini bit of extended writing. And sometimes it might say in, you know, 200 words or in 300 words, you know, talk about something or other. But as I say, it does differ. Some of the assessments, yeah, you'll have like 10 questions and they'll all be short answer questions. Other cases, sometimes you get to an assessment and there's only one question. Um, and that might be just applying what you've learnt to a particular thing. Um, so for example, if you're doing one of the flower essence uh, ones, one of the assessments just tells you to go and make a flower essence and then write about it. Sometimes, as I say, there will be more practical assignments. So for example, with the gardening one, there's some that ask you to draw up garden design plans and then scan them in. Um, there's also some where you needed to do some soil testing and you need to take photographs of yourself doing it and then put that into a document and upload it. There's a couple of the more businessy type ones that would ask you to drop a business plan for example and then upload that. So there are some slightly longer ones but yeah. For the creative writing ones, as I said, there's a lot of things that give you writing tasks to do. That might give you a photograph and then right, come up with three story ideas based on this photograph. That kind of thing. So write the beginning of a story. Upload that. Um, there's yeah, so that would that would be a bit more in depth. Um, but it is of course about writing. So obviously you're gonna be doing some writing. But yes, um, so that is generally the sorts of things. For some of the more sort of practical ones, they don't usually involve actual case studies, which is one of the things that, like, for example, I, so I haven't completed the aromatherapy one, so I can't say for sure whether that does or not, um, but certainly a few of the, the even though they were practitioner ones, but they, they didn't include any kind of case studies, which is why they would not, obviously, count as a qualification um, to 
actually practice in these things. Um, but they do provide most of the sort of theory, background knowledge. So if you just want to find out more about the subject, then that's um, that's fine. Generally, you're just writing, as I say, usually quite short answers and maybe a few longer ones on um, on that topic. So in conclusion to this particular piece, um, Century of Excellence is um, definitely a site that I would recommend um, having a look at. As I say, always um, look at the courses when they are on sale because um, there is no point paying whatever it is, 120, I think it's 127 or 147 pounds, depending on which course you do, um, when you can get them for 29 pounds, um, or I say at the moment it's actually 27 pounds. As I say, I have come across a few of the courses which I would say are not worth the £29 because they're just a bit odd, but generally um, they're very good. Um, obviously they describe themselves as level 3 qualifications which would make them equivalent to, to sort of A-levels. I don't know how they work this qualification system out because you know, they're not they're not comparable to that in terms of the level. Um of the Mono A levels are extremely easy, but um these are even easier. So Yes, um I wouldn't say that they would necessarily qualify you to do anything in particular, but they may well count as um C P D courses um for some some areas. Um I don't know, that's something you'd have to you'd have to look into. They do also qualify you apparently for um CM membership, don't they? Strangely enough, which I think is pushing it a bit personally, but apparently they do. So, again, something to look into. Um, but mostly, if you are just looking for some courses to do just for the fun of it, um, if you see a topic that you like, as I say, make sure you get a discount code for it. Um, and uh, yeah, their courses can be can be a lot of fun. So, um, do go and have a look. Uh, at the website and as I say make sure you look on their Facebook page you'll find um, a lot of the discount codes will be on there so um, that is concludes my opinion on this particular course provider and do please join me um, on our next video we'll be talking about another one of the myriad of sites that I have done courses with over the years. So yeah. These last year's fed all season, all these ones. Mm, they're so delicious. Sorry. Fresh and fennel please. I've got more drying over there. I think these are last year's ones, so they're probably an excuse to eat them. But yeah, we've got loads of fresh ones there. It's so nice. Fresh off the plant. This is completely irrelevant, but I just thought you'd like to know. Um, okay. Yeah, sorry, that's just some brands, Brent, like, bland, oh, what's the word? Black, brands, blend of oil, it's so hard to say. That's